Quite often when we're web scraping, we want to access data from multiple pages. There's a few good ways to speed this up and async is one of those. I use the request HTML package a lot when I'm web scraping and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it asynchronously to vastly speed up the requests you can make to the server. So if we look at this code over in here, I've got a probably quite a standard web scraper. We're on the test, serve, uh, the test website. Um, this is just generating the list of URLs. I'm doing uh, 50 pages for what's on this website. And then we have this function here, which essentially goes out and gets a response from the server for each and every URL and saves the product information to a dictionary and then to a list. And then down here, we are looping through all of our URL list and executing this function on them to get the data out that we're looking. So if you've done a lot of web scraping, this should look fairly familiar to you. Down here, I've got my session and I'm basically using the time.perf counter to give us an idea of how long this takes to run. So I'm just gonna run this code now and we're gonna loop through all uh, 50 pages, just saw it flash by there. And we're going through each and every one. All we're doing is we're just printing the information to the screen. Um, we could do more, inf we could be getting more data uh, or less data or doing something else with it. But with async, the idea is that you can speed up the actual request to the server. So that took 10.16 seconds. I'm just gonna copy that so we don't uh, forget. And we'll just dump it in here somewhere at the bottom. So to turn this into an async program, we only have to do a few other things, but there's a few more concepts which are a bit more difficult that we need to understand really. So within async itself, there are coroutines and they're like the awaitable parts. Um, they're the functions that we write with the um, async and await syntax, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, we have the event loop, which runs everything together. So it runs all the tasks and controls all the sub processes. Generally, we don't need to, ref we don't need to reference the loop um, directly. We kind of use asyncio.run. Um, but I'll show you that again. And then the tasks is what we create uh, to actually run all the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Py file here and we're going to change this up uh, as we go into an async program. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually import the async session. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to async HTML session. And we also need to import async IO, which is uh, imp uh, built into the standard Python library. So you need to, don't need to pip install anything there. We're going to leave this part alone because we are just generating the URLs here. I'm leaving the print statement in just so we can see how many there are. And now we need to turn these two functions into actual async functions. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to type async before each one. So we know uh, that they're telling the program that these are async and they are coroutines. The next thing that we want to do is we need to change the way that our session works ever so slightly because we are we are going to be passing the session into the uh, async function here so it can access it and use it each time. So as well as the URL, I'm going to say S because we're going to give it the session. The next thing that we want to do is we need to await the request for this uh, coroutine here. So we're going to put R is equal to, I'm going to do await S dot get URL S being my session, which is why I've put S here. If you called your session something else, you would need to reference it there. The rest of this function is going to stay the same with uh, request HTML. We can actually uh, pass asynchronously as well. So that's one of the reasons why this is quite handy and a useful, useful tool to use. So that's all we need to do to this one. Basically, we're just saying that this is a async and await our coroutine that we can access with the uh, tasks that we're going to create in just a minute. The next thing we want to do is we need to completely rework our main function. I'm going to remove all of this stuff at the bottom for now. We'll add it back in and I'm going to remove everything in here. So what we want to do is the first thing is we need to create our session. So I'm going to say our S for our session is going to be an async HTML session. That's really important because we are basically telling the code that this is now an async session, which we need to do. And the next thing we need to do is we need to take our, we need to create our list of tasks. Now these are the tasks that need to go into the uh, coroutines to go for the end into the event loop. So to do this, I'm going to say tasks, tasks is equal to and I'm going to say work because this is our function here so this is what we want to run now we need to give this the s and the url so what we're saying is we're creating a task 
for each one of the functions that we would run for each URL. So when we did it synchronously, we just ran them up one after the other. When one was done, we started the next. But with this, we can actually create the tasks to run them all at the same time and wait for the responses to come back. Now I'm going to be using list comprehension here, um, but I'm just going to say for URL in URL. So all that means is for every URL in the list that we created up here, which is going to be 50 of them, I'm saying that we want to schedule a task to run for our work function with the session that we have created down here and the URL. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to return out of this function and I'm going to return the list of the tasks. So I'm just going to say return and we want to do uh, await because we want to be able to await this function. Uh, asyncio dot gather, always we're getting gathering the tasks and then we use the uh, star there and then just tasks of what we've created here. So all this is doing is basically this is our tasks list and we're basically adding it to our gather and our asyncio. What we need to do now is we just need to basically do the asyncio.run on our main function. So you kind of see like the functions are within each other. So we have this one which is getting the uh, data and passing it here and then this one which is sort of getting the tasks together and then we can run all of those and it will sort it will sort it all out in the event loop for us. So all we're going to do now is we need to run this. So we're going to say um, results is equal to async io dot run the main function that we've done with our URLs list there. So what that's going to do is it's going to uh, when it runs all of the tasks that we created asynchronously, it's going to gather all the results into this variable so then we can print them out or do whatever we want to do with them. I'm going to print them in this case to the screen. Now that should work fine for us. I'm just going to add in the time uh, dot perf counter again so we can time it. So I'm going to say our start is equal to time dot perf counter. Let's print our results and then do finish is equal to time dot perf counter minus the start and then print the finish time. So now I'm going to run this and hopefully this will be much quicker except I need have missed the capital off the async HTML session there. So that's why that won't work and probably down here as well. Uh, there we go. So now when we run this we should get no problems. We can see it's saying we've got 50 URLs that we're going to do the, the we're going to scrape. The data flashes by and you can see down here we've done it in 4.26 seconds which is less than half the time and that is because the time that our code synchronously was waiting for the server to respond we're using async we are able to let it make lots of requests and then wait for them to come back. So async is a really good way of speeding up making requests to the server. Uh, we don't tend to use it with the pass function. I'm actually going to show you AIO HTTP next time around so you can kind of see the same thing working. But this is a really cool way and a great place to start to make, uh, learn to make async requests to the server. Now as the amount of requests go up, because we're only dealing with 50 URLs, the amount of time saved uh, that gets much larger compared to the synchronous version. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hopefully that's helped a little bit clear up how to do async requests using the uh, request HTML library in Python. Uh, this is a kind of a, quite a basic and simple example, but it will work really well for you if you are doing lots of HTML page scraping and it should speed everything up for you. Even when you're doing, even when you're doing 50 pages, we were still saving six seconds of time, which could be quite important and it's quite um, useful and handy to know. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.